May 27th is the day when more of the students in Korea start going back to school. School opened back up the previous week only for third-year high school students. But on this day, more than one-third of Korean students, including kindergartners, go back to school. With the concerns about the spread of the coronavirus still lingering, most parents welcome the news, especially dual-income families. As many companies implement telecommuting, parents had to juggle working at home and taking care of their children. Just like students going back to school, parents will have to go back to the office. But the experience of telecommuting for several months is likely to bring meaningful changes to corporate culture. Many companies have realized that telecommuting doesn't hurt the employee's productivity that much. Some companies have taken this opportunity to make their employees work from home one or two days a week from now on. There has been much debate about the pros and cons of telecommuting, even before the corona outbreak. Views of those who have been working from home for the past months are also split. But it is true that everyone's concept of working from home changed fundamentally this time. This new way of working can also be applied to the way we educate our children. More than one quarter was spent telecommuting. Now we know the positives and negatives of working at home. Um, so I said more than one quarter was spent telecommuting. So um, in Korea, I've noticed people say quarter one, quarter two to describe the months of the business year, the three months as a quarter. But in English, we say first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. Or we say in Q1, we made a lot of money. In Q3, we lost money. And then we say the first half of the year and the second half of the year. So those are the proper ways to describe a quarter, which is three months. And I said, we know the positives and negatives um, of working at home. So you might hear a lot of different ways. So we say working at home, working from home, and also cyber commuting. We have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of working at home after months of cyber commuting. So again, working from home, I just said cyber commuting. And I said, we've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good and the bad and the ugly was a Clint Eastwood film in the late 60s. It was a spaghetti Western, and it was the title of the movie. But now we use the good, the bad, and the ugly to talk about uh, the truth of a situation or the real what's going on in reality. So for example, if you want to work for a company, and your friend works there, you would say, hey, look, tell me the good, the bad, and the ugly. That means tell me the positives, the negatives, and the ugly is like the worst possible things that happen at that company. So when you describe something as, oh, there's the good stuff or the bad stuff, but the ugly is the truly, truly bad stuff, and you want to hear about it so you can make your decision. So we say the good and the bad and the ugly of working from home means the positives and negatives, but the ugly might be fighting with your spouse, your kids yelling, you yelling at your children, kind of going crazy, or it's kind of more the more extreme version of the really bad thing. So if you say, hey, look, give me the good, bad, and the ugly, that means tell me everything. Companies have come to their senses and recognize that employees don't have to physically be in the office. Companies will shift their position on working from home. So I said, companies have come to their senses. So if you come to your senses, it kind of means that you are back to thinking normally. So some companies might be thinking very extremely that you must be in the office, you must be here. And it's kind of crazy. It's a little weird. Like it, it doesn't make that much sense. So if you've come back to your center of thinking, you've come to your senses. So we usually use this if you are kind of acting emotionally to something, but then after a couple hours or a couple days, you re return to your normal thinking, you've come to your senses. It means you're thinking normally. And I said that rec they recognize that employees don't have to physically be in the office. So physically, when we talk about things are physical, it means that you're working out or using your body. But when we say if you're physically there means you, your body is there. So you're either physically in the office or you can physically be home. But you can also use it like you don't have to physically be in the office. That means you can work from anywhere. So for example, if you do a lot of work online, you don't have to physically be in an office. It means you don't have to sit down and be there. The trend now is having employees cyber commute. 
Companies discovered that employees can still collaborate online and they don't need to work in close proximity to one another. So I said employees need to collaborate online. So a lot of companies like to use this word collaboration. It means working together. Um, so some companies will put different departments sitting next to each other to increase collaboration, working together with different departments. But in this case of working from home, you can collaborate online. You can have a Zoom meeting and see 10 different people from 10 different departments in the meeting. So you're collaborating online. And I said they don't need to work in close proximity to one another. Proximity means distance. So if you're at your office and you're, you know, a meter away from both of your uh, coworkers, that's close proximity. But we don't need that now with the online telecommuting. Working on site versus working at home need to be independent of one another. Working from home can be distracting and less productive than working in an office. So I said working on site versus working at home. So when we talk about on site, on site just means your place of work. So we've been talking about a lot like working at an office, but if you don't work at an office, uh, you could just say you work at your workplace or on site. And then you could say, you know, if you're not working today, you're working off site. I'm working off site at home. Um, and I said working on site versus working on working at home. So when you see versus, you might see it in English written VS, but we always pronounce it versus. So it means when you're comparing two things or two people are in a competition. So if you said like Lotte Giants versus Samsung Lions, so you'd say verse or versus. So we use both. Going to a workplace is essential for people to concentrate on work. Working at home will yield less productivity. So um, we said working at home will yield less productivity. So when we talk about yield, uh, we use it when we're driving. We should let the other person have the right of way. Um, I know it's some Konglish when you guys use yield, but also the yield means the result of something or something that you've produced. So, you know, uh, heavy rains will yield cheaper fruit this year because more rain equals more water. The trees can grow more fruit or hard work will yield you more money. But in this case, we say working at home will yield less productivity. In times of crisis, innovation increases. Companies need to be aware that the future pandemics will occur and need a system in place to deal with that. So I said, um, companies need to be aware that future pandemics will occur. So uh, we've talked about epidemics, which are uh, diseases that break out in a local area. But a pandemic is a more of a wider spread area, like a whole country or the entire world. So the coronavirus is now a or has been a pandemic. Tough times forces people to adapt to change. Companies need to evolve with these fast moving situations and be flexible when it comes to cyber commuting. So I said companies need to evolve to these fast moving situations. So when we talk about fast moving situations are situations that change quickly, but you cannot say that, oh, um, Usain Bolt, he is fast moving. You could say he's the fastest man or he is very fast. When we talk about fast moving, we talk about situations or uh, uh, scenarios, but we don't talk about people or cars. So that's the difference. Thanks, guys, for downloading and listening. And you can contact me at F-E-U-R-E-Y at gmail.com. Bye-bye.